So we're going to talk about when to sell your coins if you feel they have died. It's very subjective, but we're going to look at a few little metrics on coin market cap. I'm going to show you a chart as well in terms of how to kind of structure yourself in terms of being able to take profit, not hold all your bags forever, not get emotionally tied to them and ultimately yeah, selling them at a massive, massive financial loss. So make sure you stick around. If you are new here, make sure you do hit the links below if you want to learn more. I may go over some advanced stuff. So if you are struggling, links below, courses, all kinds of good stuff. So Coin Market is Cap is a really good website to go on. I talk about this quite a lot, and there's a few metrics that we need to look at. I'm going to go back in time. I'm going to show you a few little things that's kind of happened, and maybe what some of the new ones that could be dying could give you a little sign for. Make sense? Good. There's a bit of a shock at the end, by the way. Just going to put that one out there. Now, historic time shots. We're going to go back to May 2015, a long time ago. When I were a wee nipper, you've probably already noticed anyways, the top 20, there's a stuff on here that you've probably never even known. The thing with crypto, it is nothing like the stock market. They are not backed by certain things that enable it to have a longer kind of value. A lot of it, and even today right now, is driven by hype. Hype is a thing. They need this, like something that is a disruptor that's got a longevity with a utility, a foundation, and a, a, an ability to make assets long term, i.e. revenue. So when we're looking at the likes of Peercoin, for example, we've got 3,400 volume. This is what we want to focus on. How much volume is going through them? Are they tradable? Are they useful? Looking at some of the bigger ones, obviously Litecoin, Dash, Stellar, still around. But some of the other ones, they're not. And these were top, back in the day, these were top assets, which is what we need to look out for. Now, it's all psychologically, uh, psychological, sorry. If we go back to the last bull market, right, the big, big bull market, there's a lot of coins in the top 50 that are no longer around. The likes of BitShares, for example, has taken a huge fall from grace. We're now ranked 458. Not so much dead, but not looking great, right? Other ones to look at, obviously Dogecoin's doing very well. Populous, another one, huge fall from grace. In the top 50, now ranked 736. So you've got to keep an eye on these things. This is why you should always take profits. If you do not, there's a problem. Uh, how's Digibyte doing? Pretty, yeah, not looking great. This is going to be the basis of my next bit on this video, Dragon Chain. Ranked 42, it was a $1.1 .1 billion market cap coin, right? What is it today? 19 million. Volume, 92,000, right? This is the basis of this. Some coins will die. And I'm going to go through on the chart what you should really do to these assets if you need to. Another one that did very well in the last bull market was Substratum. It's not doing very well now, is it? 49 volume. It's not on any exchanges, pretty much. Yeah, it's literally crazy. Another one was Bitdegree, pumped up, obviously, Superman, you probably remember him. He was pumping this like crazy. It's not a bad platform. It just doesn't need cryptocurrency. That's the thing with it. You've got to look, in my opinion, you've got to look for assets that you feel genuinely need a cryptocurrency. This is the starting point of this video, that you should write this down. There's a lot of play to earn games at the moment. There's a lot of NFT projects. Do they need a coin? You need to ask that question. Anything that you're investing in, you need to ask the question, does it need a coin? Play to earn games don't really need a coin. They can make a revenue mechanism on any crypto. They can do it on Ethereum. They can do it with Bitcoin Network. They can do it on likes of Pokemon Network. They can do it on everything, right? Anything they want, right? They don't, they just need revenue. They need to sell a game to make revenue, right? They don't need to build a coin to get funding to then rug pull you. Literally, that's what they do. So just be careful. So let's look at some potential I'm going to go on two potentials that could, and one of them is very, very controversial, by the way, could be leading to a death. I'm going to show you the charts. Now, the first one is obviously safe moon, right? Is this the next one that's going to be like, uh, and I think it's already dying. They've already migrated to a new contract address. Their volume is currently 5.3 million. 
Remember when this was crazy? Remember the first contract of this, if I go safe moon, was crazy, right? This is the obviously the old one. It was on 552,000 people's watch list. It was crazy. Obviously, the, the contracts changed over. Something's not right there. Interesting, right? The other one I want to talk about is actually Litecoin. Now, I said it was controversial, but realistically, it doesn't have the clout anymore. Now, I'm not saying that it's just going to die, by the way. I'm just going to say it may well not do as well as we believe. It hasn't this year or last year. And I'm going to show you the BTT chart to explain in a minute. So when we go into the charts, I want to show you a little trick. A little trick. It's an interesting trick. It's a simple trick too. And if you, if it goes over your head, as I say, check out the links below. I've got an education platform. It'll help you. If you want to get more information as well about certain things or what I do in the market, check out my Patreon. Let's look at Rose. Rose is an example, and I'll go to Litecoin in a minute. You need to take profit when it's high. And I know that sounds really obvious, right? I know it sounds stupidly obvious. But there's a lot of things in the market that will show you. The RSI is a great example of this. The total market cap is also a great example of this too. Now, this is a three-day time frame. You need to start learning how to take some profit in any cryptocurrency asset. It doesn't matter if you think it's the best thing since sliced bread, because the second part of this is obvious. It may be hot today. It may be cold tomorrow. doesn't matter what asset it is. Rose is a great asset, by the way. I really want to buy. I've not bought any yet. I'm looking to buy. And I think it'll be great for the long term. But that being said, this could absolutely explode to like two, three, four dollars. Potentially, right? Not predictions, just putting a point out there. Longevity. But it could also drop from those levels right the way back down again. And it could struggle to get momentum again. You've got to always protect your ass. So when a project is looking likely to top out, you must always take profit. Now, in terms of a bearish divergence, we've got a very, very clear kind of one on the three-day time frame where this is going down and the price is going up. When you start seeing stuff like that, where it looks relatively obvious, start scaling out. Just scale out little bits here and there, just scale out. And when you start seeing the fact of the EMA crossing down to the downside on the three-day time frame, you'll see it on the daily as well. It's not the time to buy, realistically, unless you get a clear break, which we've got now, and it becomes support. You will save so much money. And I did a tweet about Luna yesterday. I talked about Luna saying, right, why would you want to buy this at $100, wait for it to come down in price? It did. Would, would you believe? It dropped quite significantly in value. And this was a tweet. Do not buy Luna here. We melted quite significantly, and now we're right back up here. You always want to get fair value of any asset. And also, you don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of assets that have died this year very, very clearly. We need to be careful to find those. Now, talked about it before is Dragon Chain, right? This is the BTC chart of Dragon Chain. Do I need to warn anyone that what could happen if the market does do something wrong? If coins have issues, if key people and personnel leave and developers do their own thing, if there's a rug pull, if there's an exploitation, you cannot be certain that these assets will continue going up. And you know I mentioned about Litecoin before. If I go to Litecoin BTC, now this is what I think the biggest warning sign is. Litecoin BTC has done this for a long time. It's just been dropping, right? If go to the monthly time frame, you can see it. Now, why am I thinking this is a problem? This is at its all-time low levels on the BTC pair. This, in the course of a bullish sentiment market, has not risen with the rest of the, the top 20 at the time. It hasn't. The only reason why it's high in USD prices is actually because the BTC price has gone up. So we need to be careful on stuff like this. So the trick is take some profit when it's high. Put a moving average on your chart. I use the EMA 21. Write it down. It works well. Works well on most time frames. Three day time frame, you can see very, very clearly how things work in terms of trend movements. If you're looking at any asset, you want to keep an eye on it. Finally, before we leave, Dogecoin. Spikes, people buying it. Where is it going to go? This could go a lot lower. So when the hype runs out, make sure you understand to get out. You can hold some, 
hold something just in case it turns around and gets hyped up again, but always take profit. Yeah.